glowing glass and dichroic glass. They've been around for many years, but I think they deserve a second look. This photoluminescent pigment has come a long way in recent years, and there's new sources as well. There's many colors now available, but CBS has picked the two brightest. We have a bright yellow and a beautiful aqua green. And also, this is a pure form of pigment. It has not been mixed yet with glass powders. So what I'd like to show you first is a technique how I sprinkle the glow pigment onto the surface of textured glass. I'll do this using one and a half inch squares as examples. What you're seeing here is single and double layers of the glow pigment. And here's the glow pigment sprinkled directly onto the dichroic glass texture. And then finally, if you really want a real intense glow, you can put two textures of the pigment over dichroic. Okay, so here I'm set up with my samples. I have my first row of uh, pigment that's been sifted onto one layer of texture. And then the same thing, the pigment that's been sprinkled onto the dichroic glass texture. And then finally some more intricate ones where the texture glow is above. And then one where there's a double layer of textured pigment. So the pieces up at the top, these are what I'm going to sift the glow pigment onto. And let's try the first piece. We're going to take this first piece down and I'm going to get a good spoonful of the pigment. And then I'm just going to hold it over the glass square and try my best to sift it on there evenly. I'm sure you can find better ways of sifting glass than just a spoon, but this works pretty well. You can see the texture just comes to life as I sprinkle the pigment on. This is my favorite part. So you can really see what's going on. You can add extra or just add a little bit and it can be wiped off. You can dump it off and restart. But anyway, I just get a nice uniform amount of on there. And then I'm going to clear cap this. The pigment must be clear capped. You can see my cap is larger than the base piece, so I make sure it's in fully encased. And here's my second piece. I'm going to go ahead and sift over this just like I did before. And you can see the texture come out just like in the previous piece. And you can notice that I'm sprinkling a liberal amount on there. And I don't have to be real careful. I can, if I don't like the look, I can just dump it out and start it again. But the good part on this one is the texture is deep enough to where I can really get a good amount in there and I can actually wipe off the, the tops of it with just my hand just rubbing across real gently to kind of clean it up a little until I get the desired look. And then I'm ready to put my clear cap layer on there and put in the kiln and fire. So then my final piece is actually a textured dichroic piece that I'm going to sprinkle in and this is probably the deepest texture so I like to add quite a bit on this so I'm really going to add enough to even cover up the tops of the texture too but then again I can go in with my finger and kind of clean things up and and spread out the pigment the extra pigment flows into the crevices or drops off the edge of the piece so nothing goes to waste so again you you don't have to be real careful with this even little specks of the pigment left on the on the tops of the texture will just kind of disappear or work its way down so there's no real need to, to spend a lot of time on this. Clear cap it, you're ready to go. This next project is a stenciling technique where I'm going to make an intricate multi-layered gear pattern square that glows at the base. What I'm going to do is sprinkle the glow powder over the gears and onto the base and then add the dichroic gear patterns to the top of that. So we'll get started by using these water jet gears put them on the base layer that's clear and I'm going to gather my glow powder and with a spoon same as before I'm just going to gather some in the spoon and then sprinkle it over the gear pattern to create that gear stencil. Now much like dichroic glass, dichroic won't stick to dichroic in the kiln and if I were to create a whole field of this glow pigment on the base layer and try and fuse it, it would not fuse together because the pigment is an inclusion within the glass. So I'm using these gears. Once I pull them away, we'll expose the clear glass and be able to fuse together. So now I'm going to gently remove the gears with tweezers as gently as I can. And then I'm ready to add my two dichroic gear pattern uh, layers. 
and they can be face down, face up, doesn't matter, but my choice for the top piece is uh, dichroic side up so you can really see the gears. And the final outcome, there's my piece. The CBS Glow Pigment can be used for glass casting, so that's our next project. I have my casting mold, which will make a donut pendant. And then I've mixed the glow pigment with 80% glass powder. That's our recommendation, 20% to 80%. And to make it interesting, I'm going to add some dichroic coated copper foil chips to the center and then cap it with medium sized frit to kind of hold things down. And then I like a nice thick clear cap, so I'm going to use coarse size frit. So let's get started by adding the first layer of just the glow pigment mixed with glass powder. And I'm going to Fill the mold about halfway and then kind of even it up with a brush. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this because the next step is I'm going to grab the medium size frit and sprinkle it on and it kind of dampens the glow pigment down to a nice even layer. That way when I add my dichroic flakes, it's not casting into the pigment itself. The, the uh, medium size frit is acting as a buffer um, for those dichroic flakes. And now I'm ready to apply my flakes from the dichroic coated copper foil. So I'll get my hand in there and get a nice uh, liberal pinch of, of the flakes in between my fingers and then just gently rub my fingers together as the flakes drop down onto the piece. And you can use other forms of dichroic as well. You can use uh, dichroic coated frit uh, frit flakes work well, dichroic extracts, so you can use a lot of stuff in this middle layer to create interesting effects. And now I need to add one more layer of the medium frit just to keep the, the uh, dichroic flakes in place as it's casting. So I'm going to sprinkle one more layer just enough to cover up all the uh, dichroic flakes. So after I've covered up those real nice, I'm, I'm finally ready to add my final layer of the coarse frit and I'm going to add uh, just enough to go up to the tops of the point of the casting mold and you'll have to experiment with this a little bit because obviously you can't weigh every different material in this project and come up with a recommended weight for this mold um, so it takes a little bit of judgment what I'm doing here is just evening things out and we're basically about ready to cast and also the manufacturer's firing schedules increase about 20 to 30 degrees using the glass powder pigment mixture. But here's the final outcome. Or you can just use casting molds directly with the glass powder glow pigment mixture. Mixed according to the manufacturer's instructions. Increase your firing temperature at the peak by 20 degrees, 30 degrees and you can cast with it. Well, that's about it for now, and it's lights out here at CBS.